just waiting and seeing if anybody appears. Oh, hi. Somebody's watching me. I'm not sure who you are, but hi. And uh, welcome to my live this lunchtime. Oh, hi, I think it's Brenda. I'm just looking at the little picture. And Sylvia's here. Fantastic. So I know I'm live. Great. I think I've got Facebook live working again. Hi, Mum. Brilliant. So hello and welcome to my Tuesday lunchtime live. I'm Izzy Shushinsky and I am Izzy's Crafty Bees. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator here in the UK and in North Nottinghamshire. You're very welcome to join me this Tuesday lunchtime when I'm going to do a live demonstration of two really cute cards. Quite interesting um, that I've not really used this set an awful lot just on its own, but it's a bundle of stamps and dies, and they can be used in quite a few different ways. So I'm going to be showing you um, a couple of different techniques for adding colour using this bundle. So I'm just looking at who's joining at the moment. Oh, hi, Sylvia. You're watching from hospital. So you might have to go right in the middle. Well, I'm wishing you... Mwah! lots of love and lots of support um at the moment in your journey in hospital and i'm wishing you all the very best and i hope you manage to watch on catch up perhaps later if you're feeling like you can and you are able so yeah lots of love sylvia thanks for joining us now hopefully i'll entertain you for a little while anyway <laughs> and before i do just switch switch my camera around and start the demonstration i'll start as always at the top of the show with just catching up a few golden moments um that have happened in my life since i last spoke to you last week it's all about spring really and how fabulous spring it is and things are happening I uh, did get to have a lunchtime walk during my lunch break on, I think it was Thursday last week, the sun did come out, and I had a lovely walk up into the fields, and I just stopped for a few moments with the sun on my face and listened to the skylarks, and it just brings me enormous joy when the skylarks, it just sounds like summer immediately, it was lovely. Um... And there is a new sort of movement at the moment of, I think it's hashtag take a moment. I'll maybe research that a bit better and put a link to it. And it's all about just taking a moment and closing your eyes. The next thing that made me chuckle and made me happy was it's frog season. And our pond is started to come alive again. My brother sent a video about his pond and he was counting all the frog action in his pond. I think he had eight or nine frogs. That was funny. Um, and his dog, um, working cocker spaniel, didn't know what to make of them. So that was that was quite funny. Um, uh, yeah, and just lovely weather. Great to be out. We spent all day on Sunday in the garden demolishing a shed. So apologies if when I start demonstrating you spot bruises on my hands. I look a bit like battered and bruised, but it was a very productive day. So I hope all is well with everyone. And if you want to share your golden moments or things that have made you happy, then please add in comments. So I'm going to switch my camera around and we'll have a look at these cards. Let me put my glasses on then I can see which button. Here we go. <clears throat> so let's get a good angle, nice and straight. Hopefully, I'm just going to amend that a little bit. There we are, I think we're... I think we're in position so I can just see all of my grid sheets so I know where I'm working. That's grand. So as always, I'll just show you the cards that we're going to make today. So two, same but different, really quite different. This one is the stamped card. So stamped and watercoloured. And this one is the die cut card. So that's using the die. And I've added some colour using stamping blends. So I'm going to share with you how I made both of those. Um, just as always, just a reminder, if you're shopping with me online, this is the current host code. So if you are shopping with me online until the end of March, please use this host code where um, you see the box to enter that. And if your order is over £20, then I will send you a freebie in the post next week. It won't be added to your order. I will actually personally send you a freebie and you can shop here or you can join my team 
and here's just a reminder of the bundle we're going to use today it's called the sending hugs bundle it's on page 19 of the annual catalog that's this one and this catalogue is almost at the end now. It actually finishes at the end of April and our new annual catalogue will go live on the 4th of May. So in the coming weeks, I'll be sharing some new products from the annual catalogue. So keep watching. Stay tuned. So let me just take a seat. I won't see comments just for a short while while I, while I make. And we're going to start with this card. So the die cut card. So for this one, I have prepared all the bits and bobs that we need just to save a little bit of time so I've made a um, landscape fold card and I'm using Misty Moonlight this is one of the in colors 2022 so this is retiring at the end of this annual catalogue so if you love this color now is your time to stock up before it goes I've got a piece of basic white that is just reduced by one centimetre, which takes it down to half a centimetre all round. And I'm going to use that for the inside of the card. Now, my original card, I actually folded um, sort of this way. And when I um, looked in my stack of cardstock, I already had a card blank cut and scored tent fold. So I've decided to use that one. I've also got another piece of basic white and that measures, let me use the grid sheet, 12 and a half by 8 centimetres and that's going to go underneath the top layer of misty moonlight and that again is reduced by 1 centimetre so that's 14 centimetres by 9 and a half centimetres. I've also got an extra piece of misty moonlight that I'm going to use to actually die cut the hugs word for the top. So there are all the bits and pieces of, of um, cardstock that you need. I do need a scrap of basic white actually which I've got probably one on my desk somewhere just for this tiny sentiment. Um, so that's all good. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to, I can just go straight ahead and adhere this piece of basic white to the centre of the front of my card. So let's crack on and do that. I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue. It just needs to stick flat. And it's just basic white. It's not basic white thick or anything fancy. It's not watercolour just our basic white and so long as that is central that will work i want that to peep through the die cut piece so with my piece of um my layer of misty moonlight for the top i'm going to just remove everything actually i'm going to remove my grid sheet just for the moment and i'm going to bring in the die cutting machine and i'm actually going to wave a magic wand because Here's one I made earlier. I just thought I'd save some time. I'd forgotten I'd done that actually, so I can bring my grid sheet back in. So I'm going to share with you, I should have done this right at the beginning. The stamp set is a cling stamp set, so it's red rubber. And it has this main, beautiful main um, image stamp. And it's got these lovely pieces of flowers and foliage with the stamped word hugs in the middle. And then we also have these two pretty, one flower and one leaf. And then these gorgeous little tiny sentiments. So I will just go through them in case you can't read them from the screen. I'm not sure. From all of us, thinking of you, wishing you well on your special day, sending you birthday and kisses and to you. So go with the word hugs. Hugs from all of us. You could put thinking of you, hugs, wishing you well, hugs, on your special day, sending you hugs, and then on your special day. So these can actually go inside, and I would suggest that these four match up with the word hugs. So um, that's the stamp set. The die set, layering hugs, is fab. We have this main die, which I've used here on this card. We also have this die, which cuts the word hugs, which I am going to use on this card also. 
with the little piece so I'll just pop that there we have these two little windows or two little labels and they're really sweet they've got I'm going to stand up and just see what focus is oh hi Shaz they've got that little um ridged the um sorry that's the die the little notches on the corners but when you die cut them I'm just going to bring this in when you die cut you can see it kind of has almost an embossed effect around the edge so they're really sweet and they're really tiny and I um try really hard to remember that I've got these for using with other tiny sentiments from other stamp sets and if you go ahead and pre-cut yourself a pot of these and just have them on your desk then they're really handy to have and then we have some leaves and some flowers and then we have these two that actually cut out the images in the stamp set so this one will cut this flower and this one will cut this leaf so you get the idea so it's a handy um, and mixed set you could just use the dies which I'm going to do on this um, card I'm only going to use a sentiment from the stamp set so I've die cut this large image and the reason I decided when I was prepping for this live last night to, to go ahead and pre-cut that um, was just simply because you don't need to see me popping out lots of tiny little bits and pieces so let's bring back in so we refresh we've got the card base with that layer of white and then we're going to layer this over the top now this comes out when you die cut it and you can use this die cut piece let me pop it out in its entirety as with all these intricate dies you have to handle them very carefully because they are delicate so you can use this piece on its own you can see how beautiful that is I've decided and I have to say that I am casing this card um, two other demonstrators have made this card in different colorways with slight alterations um, I'm trying to think who it was Michaela Titheridge who is fantastic I love her and there was another one Stacy Marsh who I don't know I've never met Stacy personally but I did see that Stacy Marsh had also done this card so this is not my design I've done a, a bit of a, a tiny variation and just made it my own with the colour um, combinations and how I finished it off with gems. So I've popped that back in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the whole thing down with dimensionals. So let's grab a pack of regular size dimensionals and let's go for it. So I'm going to need definitely one in each corner of the top piece I just thought it was ever so effective the way that we can see the colors through that layered piece and it's quite a while ago since I actually saw Michaela's version and I did ask her permission to case it so that's great um, I'm now going to just chop some of my big I could use mini dimensionals but when I tried it with my with my sample yesterday I still found that some of the mini dimensionals just peeped out from behind the words so I'm actually going to chop some of my big dimensionals into half so I'm just going in and reducing them down I'm going to go in quite a way and just chop a few of them so I've got plenty so that's sort of next layer now these are faffy so just bear with me while I use faffy fingers um, I tried actually pulling the, plucking them out using my snips but I actually found it was more faff so let's just go in so excuse while I do faffy fingers and we'll just get some half dimensionals popped behind these letters sometimes we have to faff for our art don't we <laughs> I'm just going to double check and they're not they're not peeping out from behind the words I really did think that the mini dimensionals would just do it but um, they were just that tiny bit too big oops missing these little tiny bits there we go. 
let's pop one last piece there. See if we can get, I think that's going to be too big in actual fact. Let's not do it, that's going to be too big. I'm just going to use this little tiny bit here. There we go. Now we just need to take some of these backings off. And look who I'm going to bring in. Can you see? I've got my lint roller. I'm going to just stick some of those backings um, onto my lint roller. It's my favourite tool, isn't it? I wish Stampin' Up! sold them. And I could pop them on orders for customers. Because these backings do get everywhere. I um, do see demonstrators using their snips and pokey tools to lift the backings off, but I just get in a pickle when I use extra tools. I think I'm just a, a crafter who likes to use a fingers, <laughs> get fingernails and everything. So there we go. There's all my little backings on my lint roller. They're not going to fall on the floor. So we're just going to carefully stick this down the whole lot over that white. We're just going to take care to get an equal border. And we're going to add some colour. So I'm going to use blend, stamping blends. And I've chosen some pretty pinks. So we're going to go with Flirty Flamingo Light and Dark and petal pink dark and some old olive light and it's a really quick coloring uh, technique we're not going to faff too much with the coloring in we're going to poke the fine nib end in through the die cut and we're just going to scribble now i was quite surprised when i watched the demonstration of this that the color wasn't sort of added underneath and then the layer put down on top um, but when you do actually make this card it does make sense when you actually do it you just have to work quickly and not worry too much um, pop that colour through the die cut it's really quite an easy blends are so forgiving they're just fantastic I think I've demonstrated them a few times in recent weeks um, so if you're not persuaded by them now I reckon you never will be. So let's get some blends and have a go because they're so easy. That's just a really quick scribbly colouring technique. Um, I think let's just pop some in there. And I'm going to go in with the darker shade of Flirty Flamingo just to give it some tone. And I'm just going to make some sort of V-shape. Um bits of colour. I'm not even thinking too much about it. I'm just, and at the moment it looks really messy, but they're blend. So I'm going to go back in with the lighter shade and blend that through. So lighter, scribble over the top. I'm going to actually hold this up so you can see the before and after. So can you see this messy look? And then when you blend it, it goes, it looks really nice. So here we go. I'm going to continue doing that. Just scribble, scribble. Quick as you like, doesn't take long. Let's have a look. Okay. And I'm going to use the petal pink for the other flowers. And I'm only using one shade. I'm not going in with two shades. So even quicker. It's such a pretty dye. Really, really pretty. Now, how many of those flowers have we got? I think that's about it. Four of those. Then, oh no, there's one there. You do have to just watch carefully. And I have a look at the original. Yeah, I'm going to go in with, um, I think, is that a pink one? Just 
trying to decide which are coloured. I think that could be classed as a flower. Let's pop some pink in there. And then we're going to go in with Old Olive. And I've picked out the light Old Olive. Same again with the pen and the fine nib end. And I did find just pressing down that die because we popped it up on dimensionals. Just giving it a press down helps. And you can decide how much or how little um, of the pieces to colour in. You could leave some of them white space. For example, I could leave these areas here. That looks leaf shaped, so I'm going to colour that. You can leave some of them white. Keeps it looking nice and fresh. And I think we'll call that a day because I think that looks really pretty. So we've done with the colouring really nice and quick. The only other thing I'm going to add is I'm going to use a chalk marker. And I'm going to add some white speckles like I did with the original. I've just added a few little white speckles. And the way I'm going to do that, now we used to have a really fun gadget. And now Stampin' Up! don't sell these anymore. Let me see if I can get it. We don't sell these anymore, but you can still buy them um, pen spritzers. Um, it wasn't a Stampin' Up! branded tool, and so we discontinued it. But you can still buy them from other craft stores. I wouldn't normally point you towards. So the um, way I did my speckles last night was I held the cap and I actually just really went for it with like banging it and splattering it with the with the lid like so. It's very hard to direct the splatters that way. Of course, if you've got some white craft ink and you've got a paintbrush or you've got um, a stamp with splatters, you could do it that way, but flicking your pen top like so, like so, you can get some speckles. Probably doesn't show up, but this spritzer we used to have, you pop your pen in and then just tighten it down and then you squeeze the puffer And it's a bit like an airbrush, so you get a bit more of a condensed, splattered effect. I do absolutely still love my spritzer, but we discontinued it. I just have seen them um, on eBay and places like that. So I'll just show you those speckles up close. Just let the camera focus. I think you can just about see them if I angle that into the light. And it just takes away the... Um, bare background that makes sense I'm going to use some misty moonlight ink Put that away. and I'm going to use sending you and I just need to find a scrap of basic white I thought I had some maybe I've just dropped it in my other box bear with me here we go I have so many pieces this size in my scrap drawer. So I'm going to stamp sending you on a piece of scrap white. Really easy. So I tap, tap, tap. No difficult techniques here. Tap, tap, tap. Just be careful because it's a very small um, sentiment. So you need the lightest of touches. The stamp just needs to kiss the cardstock. And you really don't need much pressure because you don't want to smudge or fatten the letters so just hold it down so again tap 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 straight down hold it down I'm just holding it and letting it kiss the ink kiss the cardstock and straight up and we get crisp lettering we don't get any fat so if I went squidge 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 and then lots of pressure you can see we get blobs around the edges we get fat letters and that's because the pressure is squishing the rubber of the stamp and all we need now is that tiny die for that really small sentiment and we just need to bring in let's grab the mini stamping cut and emboss machine 
which is on special offer at the moment until the end of March. The mini machine is on special offer with 20% off. I'm going to need one of those sentiments. So we'll just pop that on a slight angle. And we'll keep our fingers crossed that that's good to us and it doesn't wiggle. I'm going to nip that as I start feeding it through. Slipping around on my grid sheet. Here we go. little sentiment sending you and we can pop that next to hugs who doesn't want to send someone hugs we've all been too long without hugs don't you and I'm just going to stick that straight down you can see how I just wanted to say you can see how sticking the um, dimensionals behind the word hugs has held that die fast inside um, the negative so no need for any messy glue. It's held it there. It'll be absolutely fine. Some of my original is popping up a little bit, but it's still held fine and it's still in its home. So we don't need to mess around with too much glue on the background, just those dimensionals. So let's pop that on. Sending you hugs. Lovely. And we're going to finish this card off with some gems. And... Um, the other week I'd forgotten about these gems. These are the From My Heart Faceted Gems. And these are in the annual catalogue. So we're just going to use three of those and we'll just dot some glue. So I'm, again, I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue, just that Tombow. And I'm going to be careful, pop three little blobs of glue on there. And I'll use perhaps my Take Your Pick tool, the putty end. I just take off the old putty, give that a twist and some new putty will come out and I'm able then to pick up the gems because these are not self-adhesive, these are um, just loose gems. You can use them in shaker cards or just to embellish a regular card. Now sometimes I find when I've got new putty on my Take Your Pick tool, it's so sticky, it doesn't want to let go of what it's hold of. Such a useful tool. Now some of these gems are upside down, but no matter. <laughs> we will flip them over, pop them in the glue. There we go. Shall we go for a big one or a teeny one? I think we'll still go with the smallish one. And that pink colour is iridescent. It's really pretty. It looks really cute. So quite a quick card. The only piece of that card I didn't demonstrate obviously I didn't do the cutting and scarring on air but um, I didn't do the die cutting of the fancy layer and the only reason was just to cut down a bit of time just popping out those bits those little bits but I find the easiest way of popping out the tiny bits when we have a really intricate die is I just run my fingers across and then I give it a good flick from behind get the majority of the pieces out, get as many pieces out with a good flick behind and then um, any extra ones I just go through with my pointed end of my Take Your Pick pokey tool and just pop them out. So really pretty, dead easy to colour but I think you will agree, I'm hoping you're going to agree, that's really effective. It's almost a bit sort of stained glass. I like the way that those colours just pop through from behind. So that's one card with a really lovely colouring technique. Now my second card is a bit more time consuming and this is a watercolour technique. So for the second card we're going to use the stamp, this beautiful stamp, really nice big stamp with all of that foliage and flowers and the word hugs in the middle. We're going to use... Um, now I've chosen an extra sentiment so I'm loving this celebrating you stamp set which is in the January to June mini catalogue lots of fab sentiments in here and I'm actually going to um, I was going to change it we'll see at the end we'll, we'll just hold that thought for the moment and we'll see right at the end 
Um, but yes, I wanted to point out we've got uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, we've got Birthday, we've got Mother's Day, Thank You, Easter, Wishing You Happily Ever After, uh, Lots of Love and Anniversary. So for me, I bought this stamp set for Anniversary and Happy Mother's Day, to be perfectly honest. Um, I've got plenty of stamp sets with Happy Birthday, although I have come to this one quite a lot because it's a good size. It's not too big and not too small. Welcome little one. So you've got something for every, every event really here. Um, you can also double them up because of the font being really clever. So, for example, just for you, this lovely little font here, scrolly font, matches grateful to celebrate you every day happy mother's day the same they match welcome little one grateful to celebrate you every day happy birthday grateful to celebrate you every day so the fonts are really clever in that you can mix and match between the different sentiments um, and that's one of the things that i absolutely loved about this stamp set it's it's so versatile as a sentiment set i'm always one of the first things i look for in a new catalogue is where are the sentiments show me the sentiments because some of the stamp sets that we do have with fab images don't always come with fab sentiments i'm just going to leave it at that i'm going to need some ribbon and i've got a trick to show you with the ribbon my color scheme for this card is blackberry bliss pale papaya and old olive my favorite green as always for the leaves so that's my color scheme I'm going to use some Versamark and black embossing powder and I have prepped some, just bear with me, I've prepped some card pieces so let me just clear a space as always my space is getting cramped so I've prepped my pieces this time I've gone for a, um, I think we'll call this a gatefold rather than tentfold landscape base which I've got filthy already in basic white thick I've then got a layer of blackberry bliss reduced by one centimeter so that will be 14 by nine and a half I've then got a piece of uh, shimmery white not basic white but shimmery white and I've chosen to use shimmery white because it's lovely to watercolor on and yet it's not as thick as the watercolour cardstock and I've got a piece of basic white for the sentiment which we may or may not use. Stay tuned, we may just change this card out right at the last minute. I'm going to share that with you in a tick. So for the first step of technique, we're going to heat emboss the main image in black. So we want a nice juicy Versamark ink pad. I need to open open up my black embossing powder box and just prepare myself because it's very messy black seems to go everywhere so I'm just going to sort myself out I'm going to just tip all of my black powder back into the little tub so I'm ready to go So we're going to ink this big stamp it's a lovely big stamp i have used this stamp if you remember just before christmas i think it was late last year anyway i used this as a background stamp for i can't remember the stamp set's name the headless ladies i think i called them and um I used it with one of the ladies over the word hug and I turned it round portrait style. So I do like to use this stamp as a background without the word hugs. I'm now going to sprinkle my embossing powder liberally and it is quite a large stamp so I want to make sure I'm well over the box. Try and get as much of this embossing powder back into the box give it a good old sprinkle now I tap to get as much off and then I turn it round and I give it a really good <laughs> flick from behind and that usually just springs off any excess and I've just sprung off slightly too much there I think I've lost some of that image 
where I've just smudged it with my fingers but no matter what I might do is switch out and have my ribbon at this end instead of this end it's not potentially a happy accident we won't worry about it pop that to one side and bring in my heat tool I'm going straight for, for heat setting two and we just need to let that warm up a bit and I'm going to go from behind stand oh hi Barbara I can see people now I'm standing up so I'm going to go in behind and start that embossing and just get everything warm and you'll see that start to turn hopefully a large image but it's really worth heat embossing let's just come on top Just double checking I've caught everything which I think I have there so that's that let's turn that noise off so it is a nice large image and it really is worth this extra step of heat embossing I could have stamped that in stays on to do watercolor but I really want to um, use the heat embossing it gives you a slightly different line to just bear with me while I get rid of some of this excess um, it gives you a slightly different outline to the stays on and it allows your watercolour just to pool a little bit. So I'm going to start actually with my leaves and I'm going to use one of our water painters. I don't put my water in the middle of the brush. I use my water in a little jar. So I'll just have this to this side. And the other thing I always like to have in my hand when I'm using watercolours is a piece of kitchen towel just so that I can um, control and squeeze a bit of that ink into let me just get myself organised into the lid dampen my brush and put some water into the lid now I know I've got a nice pool of colour and I'm going to work quickly with one layer as always and it's that embossed um, outline kind of captures the watery ink almost acts like a little I want to say dish if you know what I mean it's just slightly different if you've not heat embossed and then watercolored before um, I encourage you to try it and I'm going as always with one layer of color and then I'm going to come back through with a bit of shading and I think I actually saved these leaves for um, blackberry bush so I'm going to do the bigger leaves in old olive and these little leaves I'm going to come back round with blackberry bush So again, it's a technique, it's a colouring in technique, but it's not one that needs to take forever. Just work fairly quickly. And I know that like any um, paper craft techniques there are some techniques that we like and there's some techniques that we don't like as much um, and you either love colouring in or you hate colouring in you love fussy cutting or you hate fussy cutting and this card has both colouring in and fussy cutting so if you're not a particular fan of colouring in the other technique I could suggest for this 
is perhaps using a sponge dauber and doing some loose colouring. If you don't want to do precise colouring, just add a bit of colour here and there with the sponge dauber and don't worry too much about being precise. So that's the first layer of green really quickly. I'm going to dry off my brush, I've cleaned it, but I'm going to dry it off and I'm going to pick up some of this concentrated colour where I've not added water. So over here, just this sort of straight colour. And I'm going to go back around all of these leaves and just add a stripe here and a stripe there. I'm not even thinking about why this isn't a card for thinking about which directions the light coming, where is the shadow falling. It's just a case of adding a stripe here and a stripe there to add a little bit of interest. So stop it from looking totally flat. This is one of those colouring techniques that if you're not, if you're a little bit nervous about water colouring, it's one I would just encourage you to have a go at because doing it this way, quick sticks and then going back in and adding a bit more shade, it'll give you confidence because when you step back, you'll think, oh, that, that looks a bit different. That does look good, actually. And you'll be quite amazed at yourself. So go for it. See, I'm just adding a flick, just a flick here and a flick there. You could use two different shades of green. You could use a bright green, maybe like, um, or a lighter green like Pear Pizzazz, and then go back in with a, different shade of green like um, I think shaded spruce or something and see what effect you get with two different colours of green just to add that shade. Now I've gone all the way around just adding that little bit of shade and you'll see how that's picked that up so I'll clean that brush off and dry it and we'll just clean the lid or take the water excess water out of the lid and close that ink pad. And that's that colour done with. I'm going to now go in with Pale Papaya. Now, if you feel that your hands with the newer ink pads are not strong enough to squish that ink, you can get yourself a block and add your ink to your block and use this as the palette. So I'm going to do the same. Add quite a bit of water to start with. And I'm going to colour some of these bigger flowers. Again, working pretty quickly. It's such a pretty colour, pale papaya. It really does contrast nicely with uh, the dark blackberry bliss. it for my pale papaya I'm going to do exactly the same and add another little bit of shade so I'm going to dry off as much water as I can go in I'll use this concentrated ink that's in the lid and again I'm just going to go in and just do a couple of stripes here and there just add a bit of dark Personally, I absolutely love colouring in. I find it so therapeutic. I could just sit here all day. But I also want to demonstrate that um, you don't have to be a colourist or even take a lot of time. So if I wanted to make 
a special card quickly. I wouldn't shy away from colouring in. I would still use colouring um, techniques as well as stamping the colour. I would actually use colouring techniques for a special card because you don't have to take ages about it. And now for my last colour, just to add a final contrast, I am going to use Blackberry Bliss to pick up that base background. And again, I'm going to squish them in the lid. You can see this is being well used. Add plenty of water. Just grab my tissue. And with it quite weak and watery, I'm going to go, I'm actually just going to take some of that water off the brush. I'm going to go in some of these really little bits, there's some of these tiny little berries. I'll put little flashes of colour here and there. And that contrast with the pale papaya, I think, is just lovely. Just really pops out. And this shimmery white cardstock is fabulous for taking on colour and water. It almost behaves like a watercolour cardstock, but without the texture. Oh, we've just missed a leaf there, so we'll just add a bit of blackberry. Yeah, it um, it has the same sort of properties as watercolour cardstock, but without the texture. Um, and I really like it. Now, I started colouring that one green, but we'll just add a bit of blackberry there. And I think we can call that done for colouring in. We'll just clean that brush off, pop the cap back on and that's that done. Um, now when I looked back at my original card I wasn't sure about whether that bit in the middle needed some extra colour and I did debate whether I should have blended with a blending brush that centre um, but I, could, I just really can't decide. I think it looks lovely as it is but I just couldn't decide in the end. So I'm going to now fussy cut the whole lot because there isn't an outline die, but I'm going to fussy cut this entire piece. I'm just hoping that it's completely dry. I think what I might do actually, just indulge me, I'm going to give it a blast with the heat tool just to make sure that that watercolour is dry. I don't want to smudge it now I've spent time colouring it, but I am just going to go around the outside and fussy cut and it really doesn't take as long as you think just following the leaves following the shape moving the card now where I've smudged this corner with my finger I'm just going to make quite a nice um, indent and I think we will put our ribbon on this side because what I did with this card was I actually trimmed out these leaves here so we could fit our ribbon but that was quite a happy accident making that smudge oops let me get my snips back in get rid of that piece um yeah it was a bit of a happy accident making that smudge with my thumb I think this um, bundle in the catalogue is perhaps a little bit overlooked. So it's on page 19 of the annual catalogue. I think it's somewhat overlooked. I've not seen too many other demonstrators using it. It's not featured very much in the Stampin' Up's own featured sets. We do have um, featured sets that we focus on. And I've not seen it featured. Um, what can I say about it? When I spotted it in the catalogue, I actually really liked it immediately. 
but I ummed and ad about getting it because I didn't hear a buzz about it and I thought well if nobody's buzzing about it then maybe it's not liked by everyone else but I immediately saw the potential of using this big stamp as a background stamp and knew I'd get some use out of it and I have used it in a few personal cards but just not demonstrated it too much so there we go that didn't take too long just to go right around the outside fussy cut that image now I die cut the word hugs and I used I'm just going to get it some of our gold and rose gold metallic speciality paper this is that beautiful it feels smooth but it looks um what's the word it looks scratched that's not the right word it looks textured and it does die cut and I actually used I've got the small piece somewhere oh no I haven't yeah. I used our foam adhesive sheet so these are like dimensionals all on one sheet so you get I think you get six sheets let me double check that does it say six of these sheets in one pack and I cut a small piece of this and adhered it to the top and then die cut the word hugs and stuck them on but this card I'm actually going to change so secret I'm not going to show you just yet let me just pop these things to one side pop all my ink out of the way and my big messy stamp and let's stick this together so I'm going to make sure my cards aren't in the right way stick my Blackberry Bliss piece down the base card no I'm not I'm going to put my ribbon round goodness me that was a quick rescue let me just let me just take that glue off there because I'm actually going to put my ribbon round and I'm going to share with you a little trick I'm going to get this block this is block E and I'm going to tie my ribbon around block E I've shared this trick before but I'm going to share it again and I'm going to tie it round holding the block portrait I'm going to just see how much I need for a tail Put this ribbon on the spool depending on whether you're left or right handed keep you can keep the ribbon on the spool so I'm going to tie my regular bow which is a knot north to south so I've got the ribbon tails north to south now I tie my first loop using the south um, tail so I'm going to what I'm going to do is bring that up pinch it with finger and thumb so can you see the tail is still pointing south I'm then going to wrap the one that's pointing north around and I'm going to wrap it around clockwise so around to the right to the left and then make the second loop through that hole at the back pulling both of the loops of the bow east and west now we have to faff we want a tiny bow and we want to pull that pull that tail so that the bow's smaller tighten it again and now we're happy that we've got a nice neat bow we can trim that off pop the spool to one side and now I'm going to take that off the block and I've got a loop at the back I'm going to pop the block away and I want to tie this bow all the way around what I'm going to do is hold it to where I want the bow to be so let's just layer these pieces up so I want my bow to finish here so I know that I only need this is the tail remember we don't need to think about that let's move that out of the way I only need this much ribbon to tuck under this side of the card so I know that I can safely trim that there and I know that now I've got enough this way to go underneath. I can remove that now. Now, if I wanted to, I can 
take a glue dot and we can just, where's my snips gone? Here we are, runaway snips. Take this glue dot and we can anchor that bow exactly where we wanted it. So we want that bow to be there. So we'll sit it there, ready. I'll just double check that. We want this piece here and that bow's in the right place. So we're happy with that. Now we can go ahead. If we weren't happy, we could remove it. It's only a glue dot. It wouldn't take much removing. Now I can flip the whole piece over and I can use Stampin' Seal. I can run Stampin' Seal all the way around. Ready to stick this layer on. And I can tuck my ends of my bow. Not my tails that I've cut pretty on an angle, but the ends of the bow I can wrap and just tuck underneath. And that little trick, you can use a block, you can use, um, oops, let me get you stuck down. Stick down, there you go. You can use a block for that trick, you can use a jar, um, but I find a block is nice because it sits flat. You could use a stamp pad, an ink pad, um, something that sticks down, that sits down and is nice and flat. Now I'm going to stick this whole layer to the base card, just watching for equal space all the way around because remember I've used stamp and seal so I don't have any wiggle room. And now we can stick our layer, our hugs layer down and I'm going to use dimensionals for this. I've also been buried somewhere. Let's pop that up on dimensionals. Pop another one there. That's good. Now, when we've watercolored and we've heat embossed and we've added a bit of heat, the tendency for the cardstock to curl a little bit. So you can manipulate it, you can curl it back round, or you can leave it with the edges curling. Just gives you a bit of extra dimension. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to pop those on my link roller. And now we can position this layer with that ribbon just to one side where we want it. There we go. There we are. Now we can still further faff with this bow if we want to. We can pull it a bit tighter. We can puff those in, those um, loops up. We can manipulate the tails so that they actually lay where we want them. And we can trim the ends a bit further, which I'm going to do just a little bit. quite like those longer ends. We'll just trim those down a little bit. And... For this centre, I was going to cut the word hugs again, but I thought, how about changing it out? And just to prove to you that we can use the stamp set as it's designed to be used with the matching die for the letters um, that spell hugs, or we could use another die set that we've got, that we've used a lot, our stitched so sweetly dies, and we could use, if we have it, our playful alphabet and we could spell another word so I thought how nice it might be to change this to a Mother's Day card and just cover up that word hugs underneath so I'm going to go ahead and I've I've used pale papaya and cut myself one of the Layers from Stitched So Sweetly, not that one, this one in the middle, the one that we call Heinz 57. Other soups are available, of course. <laughs> and I have used exactly the same technique. So I've got a piece of flat gold foil card. I've used the sticky, double-sided sticky dimensional foam sheet and stuck that to it. And then I die cut the word mum using my playful alphabet stuck mum on top of the layer but before I did that I actually took 
my blending brush and a little bit of pale papaya ink and I just blended in the middle and I'm just going to hold that up to camera just so you can see that just underneath we've got a bit of depth of colour it's just that tiny little bit of extra detail so I'm going to stick that onto my main card and I'm going to use stamp and seal again why not doesn't get much of an outing often with me because I use Tombow multi-purpose glue so much but let's go with our stamp and seal I think it's because I just some people get wet glue all over the fingers and I just get my fingers all stuck up with dry glue so I'm just going to pop that underneath the ribbon I'm going to take care just to cover this end letter a little bit but I think the recipient's not going to know that that little straight line was the beginning of the word hugs and the ribbon's just covering up the very edge of that letter that would have been the S so if you didn't know you wouldn't know and we can finish this card as I finish this one with some of those lovely gold pearls so let me just grab those and they're the two cards that I have planned to share with you today. But before we finish entirely, and before I say goodbye, I'm actually going to reach and grab a note card. And I'm just going to share with you a bonus project. So there you go. That's same but different. I hope you like the fact that I'm demonstrating additional, once more, as always, versatility with your stamp sets and your die sets. I always like to make sure that I get maximum use out of my tools um, because we invest in them. Our, we fill our craft rooms full of beautiful products from stamping up and I like to use them, make sure I can get the maximum use. I'm just going to reach above me because I've got a box here and we've got note cards and envelopes. So here's a, is it that one? There we go, there's a note card and there's an envelope and these come in packs in the annual catalogue. I'll just pop those to one side. And what I wanted to just share was really quickly how quickly and easily we can make a note card. Let's just score that. They come scored. So let's just burnish that crease. Such a quick note card. I'm going to reach for my glue dots and I'm going to grab a pencil. And I'm going to just give myself a pencil circle. And in the stamp set, we have these two extra stamps here. The little leaf and the little flower. And I'm just going to grab some memento ink. And I'm going to make a tiny wreath on this note card. So I'm just going to ink. And I'm going to stamp around this circle just with the leaf ever so quickly. And who likes a bit of mix and match with their stamp sets as well? So we're going in with this flower. Now, I, I like the flower. It's bent and I could stamp it. Let's stamp it fully. We could stamp it fully and stamp it all the way around like this. I feel like we're getting sort of lost with that flower, but we'll stamp it all the way around so we've built up that wreath we've got leaves we've got flowers now what I'm going to do is just take my chamois and clean that entirely and I'm now just going to stamp the flower so I'm just going to take that to the edge of my ink pad and just stamp the flower and we can pop that flower out a little bit so it just stands out a little bit Quite 
likes are lost. And now, like I say, we like to mix and match our stamp sets. So let me grab, if you would indulge me for a moment. Um, why is he hiding? Where are you hiding? I'll grab this one because we've got teeny tiny flowers. And I am looking for oh, my favourite stamp set of the moment. And he's here. Uh -huh. Indulge me, if you will. Let's have a B. Because we should. And then why not grab a couple of blends? Let's go for Melon Mambo and let's not use Old Olive. Let's use something bright like Granny Apple Green. And let's colour some of these leaves. Let's colour some of those flower heads. Again, we're not doing anything clever with the colouring. This is a quick note card. Just ever so quick. I'm getting this to leave there. That's that. Now we're going to just nab these two teeny tiny flowers from this stamp set. I do love a bit of mix and match of stamp sets. And we will add um, a wee drop of bumblebee yellow. And we might even just give our bumblebee a bit of colour. So I'll grab Daffodil Delight, Dark Grey and Light Pool Party. And we'll just give our bumblebee um, a bit of colour as well. Party on the wings. We could even add a bit of Winker Stella on the wings if we wanted to. And all we need is a quick sentiment. So we could just do, ooh, that's quite nice. What's that one? Stay wonderful. I like that one. I think that got a block there, but it's got ink on, so we'll just take that off there. It could be a thank you card, or a, I'm just stay wonderful. It's quick, quick, nice sentiment. Quite a nice, quick thank you card. Just because we had these extra two images, we had this extra flower and this extra leaf that we'd not used from that stamp set. I just wanted to show you how versatile we can 
do a really quick card on the hoof. Doesn't have to be anything too difficult. I'm just going to clear these stamps and these bits away. Tidy up and then I can just quickly pop my three cards down. Let's see what we've created. Whip this away. And of course, we should have stamped our envelope for the note card as well. I'm just going to burnish that. I like it when my cards lie flat and they always want to pop up. So we have started off with hugs and turned into mum. And then we kept with the same. Oh, we didn't stick our inside in. Look, here we go. We didn't stick this piece in the middle. Let's finish that card off. And of course, we could have used one of the extra sentiments for the inside. So we were sending hugs. And we could have had thinking of you, wishing you well, or sending hugs on your special day. So we've got hugs and a bonus note card. So I hope you've enjoyed that. <laughs> I don't know what that comment from mum's all about. <laughs> I think she must have got bored of colouring, watching me colouring in. But hey, not to worry. Like I say, sometimes colouring in is um, not for everyone. Clearly not for mum today. But I won't hold it against her. I might just not send her this card. <laughs> right, I'm going to swing my camera back round to me. And I will say goodbye. Bear with me while I take a seat. Okay, so thanks for watching. If you're watching live, and uh, or if you've watched live, and thank you for watching. If you're watching on Catch Up either on Facebook or on YouTube, and please give me a like or a subscription. Please always visit my online store, Izzy's Crafty Bees. Stampinup.net for all the latest special offers. As you might be watching this on Catch Up um, at a different time to when the products that I've used today uh, were available. Okay, so thanks again for watching and I will love you and leave you. Stay safe, stay happy, enjoy the spring weather and keep crafting. Bye for now. Bye bye.